This video covers geometric sequences and series, an important concept found in IB Maths AI, topic one, number and algebra. Now there are two types of sequences that we encounter in the IB Maths AI course. They are arithmetic sequences and geometric sequences, which is the focus of this video. Now just to recap the difference, an arithmetic sequence will either increase or decrease by a common difference. So for example, in this sequence of numbers, uh, it is increasing by seven each time, an addition of seven, and we call that a common difference of seven, as opposed to geometric sequences with will either increase or decrease by a common ratio. So for example, in this sequence, it's going up by a multiplication factor or a ratio of two each time. So we call that a common ratio of two. Now, a little bit more um, notation that we need to know. The labels that we give to term values is U. So for example, this first term we call U1. The second term we will call U2. Third term U3 and so on and so on. So there's sort of the, that's the notation that we need to know. First term, second term, third term, common ratio. And then also if we wanted to find some sort of term in the difference, and let's say we weren't sure on that term, we would call that UN. So that would be the nth term in the sequence. Now let's go few, through a few more examples of geometric sequences because it's important to visualize them when we start, in, start to encounter uh, negative ratios and also fractional ratios. So I want to go through three more. The first is this one here. Let's say we have a first term of five, a second term of negative 25, a third term of 125, a fourth term of negative 625, dot, dot, dot. So this sequence continues on um, indefinitely. Well, we know that our first term, u1, is 5. Our second term, negative 25, uh, is negative 25. But what I'm interested in talking about is, what's our common ratio here? How do I get from 5 to negative 25? Well, you could either do this in your head, but one way to find out what it is, is using this formula here. The common ratio is the second term divided by the first term, which is also equal to the third term divided by the second term, and so on and so on. So in this case here, negative 25 divided by five, and you can test this in your calculator if you like, but that will be five, uh, negative five, sorry. So my common ratio is actually negative five, and that holds up for this sequence. Negative five, negative five, so you'll start to notice here that if we have a negative common ratio, the term values will switch between positive and negative numbers because a positive number multiplied by a negative is a negative, a negative number multiplied by a negative is a positive, and so on and so on. Okay, another type of geometric sequence is this one here. 100, 50, 25, 12.5, so on and so on. Now what's the common ratio in this sequence? Well, how do we get from 100 to 50? Well, we divide by two, or another way to write that would actually be multiplied by a half. And that's the same for this and the same for this. So our common ratio here is actually a half. So when we have a fractional uh, common ratio, the terms will decrease over time. Now, one more that I want to go through is this one here. 27, negative nine, three, negative one, and then one on three. Well, this is kind of a combination of the previous two. I'm both switching between positive and negative numbers, and it's also going down. And if you, and if you were to work this through, you would notice that the common ratio would actually be it's a negative number because we're switching between the two and it's also going to be a fractional number and it actually results in being negative one on three. And if you wanted to test that, you could actually do the second term divided by the first term. That would be negative nine on 27, which is negative one on three. Okay, now that we have talked through a few different examples of geometric sequences, let's look at the formulas given to us in our um, IB Maths AI formula booklet and go through a couple of examples. So there are three formulas given. The first relate to the, uh, the SL and HL course, and the third one here is just HL only. So let's, let's work through these first two. 
The first formula here is very useful to find some sort of term in the future. So for example, if I was to use this sequence here, now we know the first, second, third, fourth, and fifth term, but what if I was to ask you to find the eighth term in the sequence? So what if I was to find u8? Now, because these numbers are getting quite big quite fast, that might be mentally challenging. So fortunately, we have a formula here to quickly find that result. So that formula is equal to the first term, u1, which is two, multiplied by the common ratio to the power of n take one. So our common ratio is two to the power of, now the n is the term value that we're trying to find, which in our case is uh, the eighth term. So this will be to the power of eight subtract one. Now we can use our calculator to find out that result. And that is 256. So the eighth term in our uh, geometric sequence here is 256. Okay, so that covers this first formula here, which is finding the nth term in a, of a geometric sequence, so some sort of term value in the future. The next formula, there's actually two of them, uh, but I'll talk through each one. These both help us to find the sum of a certain number of terms in a sequence, and that's what's called a series. So a series is a sum of terms in a sequence. So again, using this example, what if we wanted to find the sum of the first 10 terms? So that would be adding up two plus four plus eight plus 16 plus 32, and then also finding the sixth term, seventh term, eighth term, etc., and then adding them all up together. Doing that by hand would be quite difficult and quite time consuming. Fortunately, we have a formula here to do that quite quickly. Now there are two formulas listed here. You can actually use either. Um, I tend to only use the left-hand one. The right-hand one, uh, the working just becomes a little bit cleaner if the common ratio is less than one. So between say negative one and one, the working here will be a little bit cleaner. But if you just use the left-hand one, you would get the correct answer. You just have a few negatives on both the top and the bottom. Okay, so let's use this left-hand one here. The formula is equal to, the uh, on the numerator, the top of the fraction, it'll be the first term, which is two multiplied by our common ratio, which is two, to the power of n, which is the sum of the first uh, 10 terms, so that'll be 10, subtract one, all divided by our common ratio, subtract one. Our common ratio is two, so two subtract one. Now we can use our calculator from there to find that result. I've entered it there, and that gets an answer of 2046. So if we were to add the first 10 terms in this sequence, we would get an answer of 2046. Now, if you're an um, IB Maths AISL student, feel free to stop the video there because that concludes the content for your course. But if you're a HL student, let's just continue on and cover this last formula here, the sum of an infinite uh, geometric sequence. Now this formula here is useful if the common ratio is less than one. So these two examples here are examples of that. Now you can see here, let's focus on this first sequence of numbers here. The term values are getting smaller and smaller. So therefore, eventually the terms will get so small that the total sum actually hits a limit. It doesn't get bigger and bigger and eventually it kind of stops no matter how many terms uh, you are adding together as opposed to say this term that we just did, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, eventually that uh, will hit infinity and you can't uh, get an idea as to how big that number is. But when the common ratio is less than one, the term values actually get smaller and smaller. So therefore you can actually sum them up and get an approximation for the sum of an infinite series, um, sequence of terms. And that's what this formula here is. I won't go through it because it's kind of an extension from the one above. So have a go maybe at this example here and find the sum of the first 10 terms and then also have a go at finding the sum of the first 20 terms and then the first 30 terms. And you'll notice that as the term number gets bigger, the sum actually remains the same. And that's because every additional term is really, really, really small. Okay, that concludes our video on geometric sequences and series.